All right, here are the solutions to this test review. The first thing we're asked to do in number one is distribute and then combine like terms. So I like to draw these distribution arrows like this. First thing to do is draw these distribution arrows. And then you know what to do. You have negative 4 times a is negative 4a. Negative 4 times negative 3b. Negative times a negative is a positive. Negative 4 times negative 3 is positive 12. So negative 4 times negative 3b is positive 12b plus 2 times 3b is 6b. 2 times negative 5a is negative 10a. So now it's the combine like terms part of the problem. So the first thing we're going to do is combine our a terms, kind of like this. I like to draw these lines. It makes it a little bit easier to know what you're combining. So it's like negative 4a minus 10a is negative 14a, because it gets bigger in the negative. And then we're going to combine the b terms, just like this. We got 12b plus 6b, that's 6, 18b plus 18 B. And that's the answer. We'll put a box around it. Okay. <clears throat> Moving on. Number two, rewrite in slope intercept form. So right now it's in point slope form. Okay, so the first thing to do is to distribute the slope, which would be three. So the left side doesn't change, it's y minus two equals 3x minus 27. Uh, add 2 to both sides. Cancels the 2's on the left. And now y equals 3x minus 25. That's the answer to number 2. Moving on to number 3. What is the domain of all continuous linear functions? So there's an important word here that we'll highlight. Continuous so in that case, it's like a function that has a line graph that is solid that goes for infinity in all directions. So the idea is all real numbers. But the way that you write it in inequality notation is negative infinity less than or equal to x less than or equal to positive infinity the test the state exam may ask the question and give you either option so you want to know both number four what is the domain of x equals negative five this is a bit of a trick question x equals negative five is a vertical line passing through negative five comma zero on the x-axis so the domain is literally just negative five since that's the only x value that this takes on this is not a function remember x equals negative 5 is not a function number 5 another bit of a trick question what is the range of y equals negative 5 well y equals negative 5 is a function but it's a perfectly flat horizontal line passing through 0 comma negative 5 on the y axis so again the range is negative 5 okay so if you wanted to write these answers in inequality notation, your domain would literally be negative 5. Uh, for number 4, it would be negative 5 less than or equal to x less than or equal to negative 5. This is a bit redundant. Nobody would write it this way. And the range would be here, negative 5 less than or equal to y less than or equal to negative 5. So it's kind of silly in both ways, but those are the answers. Those are limit cases, you know, they're weird. Um, you might not see them, but it's good to know because that's a kind of question that I could see a state exam asking for the sole purpose of attempting to confuse you. Okay, number six, what is the slope of 3x minus 4y equals 8? Well, we have to immediately recognize that we're dealing with a standard form equation in the form of ax plus by equals c. So it's fun and helpful to identify a, b, and c before you start the problem. a is 3, b is negative 4, and c is 8. We don't need c for this problem because the slope formula for standard form, which I'll abbreviate STD, slope m equals, it's negative a over 
B. Okay, so you just plug in the numbers. In this case, it's negative 3 over negative 4. So negative over a negative is a positive, so it's just 3 over 4. That's a fully reduced fraction. So we're done. That's the answer. Moving on to number seven, expand the binomial. So this is kind of the term that probably confuses people. What does this mean, expand? I'll show you. You just take x minus three and multiply it by itself. So it's x minus three times x minus three. The method most students like to use is the box method. So I'll show that, and then I'm gonna show the method I like to use. Okay. So we have this box, and then basically, we have just make a table oops we make a table like this okay let me move this a little bit all right so what you would do if you were going to fill this out like this is you would write x minus 3 x minus 3 so you multiply now you play a little game x times x is x squared x times negative 3 is negative 3 x x times negative 3 is negative 3 x and then negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9 these terms that are diagonal to one another they will always combine that's kind of the benefit of doing it this way so then you just rewrite it in the order of the greatest exponent like x squared you write first and then you write negative 3x negative 3x plus 9 you always terminate the polynomial with the constant term negative uh, positive 9 is the constant term so now we can combine like terms you have x squared minus 6x plus 9 the second way to do this, and this is the way that most people do it, and maybe higher level education, is to do something called FOIL, which FOIL stands for first, outer, inner, last, F-O-I-L. So it's first times first, outer times outer, inner times inner, last times last. If you do it right, it makes kind of like a crescent moon shape. And now you just do the same thing, x times x plus negative 3 times x plus negative 3 times x plus and now I'm going to run out of space but it's negative 3 times negative 3 so second row we just come x times x is x squared minus 3x minus 3x plus 9 same thing x squared minus 6x plus 9 either way you get the answer I don't care it's fine okay moving on to number 8 and final question, what is f of 8? And that should say if f of x is 3x minus 12. So all you're doing is plugging in 8 for x. So you write f of 8 equals 3 times 8 minus 12. Well, 3 times 8 is 24, so it's 24 minus 12. 24 minus 12 is 12, so the answer is 12. And that concludes this assignment.